Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from TechSpurt and if you are royally skint right now but in search of a new smartphone, well Realme might be your new bestest bud. It hasn't just launched a single new smartphone costing just over 100 quid but packing some respectable specs, it's actually just spaffed down a pair of them. The Realme C31 will cost you 129 quid here in Blighty. The Realme C35, slightly more expensive at 149 quid, but for that extra 20 quid, you are getting a lot more fun here. It upgrades those specs in pretty much every way. So let's rudely yank the Realme C31 and the C35 out of their lovely pretty yellow boxes, do a full side-by-side -side comparison so you can see which one might be best for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you get in that little box besides the smartphone, of course? Well, both phones come with a power adapter bundled in the box. It's an 18 watt adapter here in the Realme C35, and it's only a 10 watt adapter on the C31. You've also got an identical Type-C USB cable. Oh no, wait, scrap that. It's actually Type-C USB here on the C35, but on the C31, it's all micro USB. Ugh. For that reason alone, frankly, you should just choose the C35. And you got a quick start guide, the usual gumph, but no condom case bundled in there to protect your new Realme phone. And also has to be said, here on the Realme C35, you get a proper phone box with a proper lid, whereas it's more of a cheapy effort here on the C31. So obviously that's going to be a massive crucial factor in the decision. Okay, so here on my left, we've got the Realme C31. On the right, it's the Realme C35. Slightly bigger at 6.6 .6 inches versus 6.5. Although despite the fact that the C35 has that bigger display, the actual dimensions of the phones aren't really any different. That's mostly because the C31 has chunkier bezels surrounding that display, especially down below. Now like all budget blows around this price point, both the C31 and the C35 are constructed from plastic, but it is a very different design on the two. You've got a matte textured finish here on the C31, so it feels slightly rough when you rub your thumb or your finger over the surface there. Whereas here on the Realme C35, it is a very smooth finish instead, and as you can see there, incredibly glossy and reflective as well. And in fact, that one's already picking up greasy prints and finger smudges here on the back end. So if you want something that's going to stay pristine without needing constant buffing, well, definitely the C31 is going to suit you. You've got a more rounded finish on the edges here on the C31 as well, compared with the very flat edges on the C35. So the C31, a little bit more comfortable to clutch, though it also weighs more at 197 grams versus the 189 gram C35. And you've got a small selection of colours with both of them. By small, I mean literally two. You've got glowing green or glowing black here on the C35. On the C31, this is the silver model, but you can also pick it up in a dark green finish. So on the software side of things, as far as I can tell, it's an identical setup here on the C31 as it is on the C35. What you've got is Android 11, so not the latest, freshest Android 12, unfortunately. And on top of that is slapped the Realme UI R launcher. So it's not full on, full fat Realme UI as you would get on a lot of other Realme blowers. This is a more restricted version because of the limited performance. So you don't get as much in the way of, for instance, customization options, but you do get some little bonus bits chucked in there, like some smart gesture control. And most of the standard Android stuff, the likes of digital wellbeing and parental controls, yada yada. And it certainly is a very stock Android vibe here on Realme UI. Or you've got the usual Google Discover feed and everything you just drag down the notifications bar like so. And like Nokia and Motorola rivals, very stripped down, very streamlined and easy to get on with. For security, both of these budget Realme blowers have an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor. It's slightly indented here on the C31, whereas the power button is jutting forth from the surface here on the C35. But both seem pretty responsive, pretty reliable. Quick tap of your digit to the surface and you are straight in, basically. Likewise, the C31 and the C35 also support face unlock. So if you're wearing gloves or your mitts are a bit moist or something. However, the Realme C35 offers up double the storage of the C31. You've got a choice of 64 or 128 gigs on the more expensive model, whereas that's cut in half to 32 or 64 here on the C31. But both do offer a separate micro SD memory card slot on the SIM tray, so you can expand that storage up to a further terabyte. Now, when it comes to that display tech, I'm actually surprised by how much better the Realme C35 is compared with the C31s in the visuals that it spunks out. Now both smartphones do serve up an IPS panel. On the Realme C31, it's a basic 720p display compared with a full HD panel on the C35. So you do get crisper visuals on the more expensive phone. However, the C35 seems like an upgrade in pretty much every other area as well. The visuals seem more poppy and more vibrant, probably because it reaches a greater peak brightness compared with the C31. 
Definitely the clarity is better when you're using it outdoors, especially if you're wearing sunglasses. The viewing angles are better as well. The image darkens quickly and the colors get all distorted when you tilt the C31 away from your face, whereas the C35, that picture quality holds up pretty well, even at an angle. So overall, I gotta say the Realme C31 display is quite disappointing, even though it is a very cheap handset, whereas the Realme C35, that display is pretty bloody good for under 150 quid. You've got a small selection of display settings you can play around with, including a night light, just to basically filter that blue light and make for an easier on the eye experience in uh, the evening times. For instance, you've got a very small number of color options you can play around with. Basically, you can make those visuals a bit warmer or a bit cooler. No refresh rate option though, because these are both 60 hertz panels. You don't have a 90 hertz or 120 hertz fast refresh option. And it's a basic mono speaker output on both the C31 and the C35. Let's run them side by side, see if there's any difference episode of Techspert Weekly, the weekly tech news show that still presses ahead even when there's bugger all tech news all week long. Hence the absolute garbage fire that was last week's episode. So as far as the speakers go, that's definitely one area where the Realme C35 isn't superior to the Realme C31 because those speakers are both cack. Good news is you do have a headphone jack on both these Realme budget blowers and you've got Bluetooth 5.0 support on both too. As for the performance, well, it's a Unisoc chipset powering both of these handsets, though a slightly different version. You've got the T616 in the fresh new Realme C35, and that's downgraded to the T612 in the C31. Four gigs of RAM in both, though, and as you can see, not exactly a massive gulf between them as far as the benchmarking scores go. Gotta say, for everyday shenanigans, both these phones seem absolutely fine. Your apps don't take an age to load up and seem sort of reasonably responsive. Get away with some light multitasking and all that good stuff. But of course, to truly test out that performance, I'm just gonna give them both a quick go on Call of Duty Mobile, see if you can actually do some gaming on them. Let's start with the Realme C31. It looks like you can bump that up to medium graphics quality and a high frame rate, so let's try that out. And sadly, neither the C31 or the C35 sports the usual Realme UI gaming modes, I guess because it's the R version, so that's been stripped out. And I gotta say, not a great gaming experience, as you might imagine on the Realme C31. The actual performance was smooth enough and the phone didn't heat up or anything like that, but that display, not particularly responsive, 120 hertz touch sampling, so not quite as responsive as you need for something like Call of Duty, where every poke and swipe, like every millisecond matters. And also the display is pretty low res and kind of dark, and it's just not very easy to see what on earth is going on at times. So now let's try the Realme C35, and as you can see there, the actual graphic setting is exactly the same as the C31. It maxes out at medium graphic quality and high frame rate. And I've got to say, despite its improvements, the Realme C35 definitely not made for gaming. The 180Hz touch response still not quite good enough for something like Call of Duty Mobile. I couldn't quite get those sights on people fast enough. So again, my aim was just that little bit too lethargic. I just felt like I was behind the pace the entire game. But that said, again, the performance was absolutely fine. And again, the phone did not begin to heat up even after a pretty grueling match. So yeah, if you're after a wallet-friendly smartphone that's also going to be decent for gaming, I'd say definitely look elsewhere, something like a Poco smartphone instead. I've rounded up the best budget smartphones under £200 right now, so go check that out for more ideas because these Realmes just don't quite cut it. And also because you've got the basic Unisoc technology in there as well, no 5G supports who are limited to LTE. As for the battery life, well, it's a 5,000 mAh capacity cell crammed in both the Realme C31 and the C35. And the battery life seems to be basically the same on both as far as I can tell. The drain seems to be consistent, even though you've got that upgraded display tech here on the Realme C35. At the start of this video, they had the same percentage battery remaining and I did the same amount of video streaming and gaming and everything on both of them throughout this video, same amount of screen on time. And as you can see there, they're pretty much neck and neck. So the only real difference with the battery tech is the fact that the Realme C35 will recharge faster. It supports 18 watt charging versus 10 watt on the C31. So last up in this unboxing and comparison, let's check out the camera tech. And on the Realme C35, you've got a 50 megapixel primary sensor versus the more basic 13 meg effort here on the C31. Looks like you get effectively the same camera app on both the C31 and the C35, though complete with the same bonus set of features, including a portrait mode that's fully scalable with that bokeh effect. If you flip across to more, you've got, as you can see there, almost the same amount. The only difference being the high resolution 50 megapixel mode here on the C35. 
Here's a quick side-by-side -side of a few photos I captured around the homestead with both the C31 and the C35 so you can see how they compare for the actual quality. As you can see, both of them quite limited in their effectiveness, especially when you use them indoors. You gotta be really careful with tricky lighting. And in fact, I found that in quite strong sunlight, the C35 often oversaturated the image, whereas the C31 didn't. So these are definitely best off used just for your simple shareable family shots. You can also shoot video on both the C35 and the C31 as well. Neither of them offer a 4K option or a 60 frames per second option, but that's not a massive shock at this sort of price point. And again, best limited to very basic, simple home movies, and that's about it, given the quality that I'm seeing right here. And then rounding up the camera lenses is a basic macro lens and also a monochrome sensor as well. And around front, it's again pretty basic tech. You've got a 5 megapixel selfie shooter on the C31. That's upgraded to an 8 megapixel here on the C35. And again, if you're a massive Instagram fan or something, I would say try and bump up your budget if possible. Otherwise, again, these are fine for just simple shots to share with the fam. And both the Realme C31 and the C35 can shoot 720p HD footage using the front facing selfie cam. This is the Realme C31 right here. And this is the Realme C35 just again to give you a bit of an idea of how they compare for the visual quality and also that audio pickup. And there you have it. That in a nutshell is how the Realme C31 and the C35 budget blows stack up against one another. And as you can see, that C35 may only be 20 quid more expensive, but it packs some serious upgrades in there, including like the storage that display tech the visuals are so much better on there got a boost to the charging speeds and a bump in the camera resolutions as well but of course both are very limited still as you'd expect for under 150 quid so if you're looking for something to do a bit of gaming on for instance i would say stay clear that's what i reckon anyway it'd be great to hear your thoughts on these blows down in the comments below please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you